So today I'm supposed to continue the description of the Open Science Platform. Uh, yesterday I concentrated on more technical elements and services of the platform, namely the knowledge base, the open access repository, and the science gateway. Uh, today, I will concentrate on the educational services of the platform, and then I'll go through the e-research ACFEST model that we came up with in the, in the project, and uh, some uh, figures and some uh, um, outcomes of this uh, the implementation of the model. And then, of course, I'll try to draw some conclusions. So I'll, um, I'll start from, my, from the same point I started yesterday. Uh, scientists in, in the world, they apply an iterative procedure that we call since Galileo Galilei, since beginning of the 17th century, the scientific method. So we have several flavors of the scientific method. But uh, we start from the experiment, we try to uh, generalize, and we build a theory. This was the first part in the, first, in the 17th and 18th and 19th century. In the 20th century, with the onset of relativity, quantum mechanics, and so on, and particle physics, I mean, a standard model, we start from theory, we make predictions, and we run experiments. But the approach is the same. We compare, uh, we analyze data, and uh, we, what do we do? We write papers. The first scientific revolution happened in the middle of the 17th century when the first uh, uh, scientific papers, scientific journals came up. And this actually marked a real revolution, but it's the same since almost four centuries. So careers and uh, visibility is done based on scientific papers, which is the main output uh, uh, of uh, the scientific research. The scientific method stands on two fundamental pillars, repeatability and reproducibility. They have to do with the kind of errors we have when we do experiments, when we measure things. And uh, you may wonder if science, actually people wonder if science is really reproducible. And in the last, uh, I would say five, six years, People try to see if starting from papers, which is the final output of scientific research, other people were able to reproduce the, the, the conclusions in, uh, written in that paper. And they failed. So that's a very important, a very nice uh, uh, special issue of nature that uh, is about challenges in irreproducible research, is a living issue of nature. That, that collects all the papers that talks about difficulty or impossibility to reproduce the scientific research. And people try to ask why the, uh, the science is not reproducible if people follow the scientific method and they, they, uh, uh, they publish the, the paper, even if you publish in an open access. So the main reason is that it's not available. You usually have the papers, but not the data. And the software is not available. So data and software accounts to almost two thirds of the reasons why the science is not reproducible. And this is, I mean, this is the main difficulty. I mean, you publish and that's it. But I mean, you don't give other people the possibility to reproduce your, your to reproduce your uh, your conclusions because you people do not share data, do not share the software that has been used to analyze the data. But repeatability and reproducibility are not all. There are many other things, and so the most important one is reusability. What you really want to do is to be able to reuse the the knowledge that is published. So take software, take data, and maybe combine or extend the analysis to tackle bigger problems or more in the interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary problems. So reusability is, is very important. So open science is coming since, I would say, two, three years as a model, as a paradigm to share data to share 
all the aspects and stages of research process, software, data, even complete machines, complete virtualized environment that can be used to reproduce and of course to extend the results. So I would say in two keywords, in three keywords, open science is open, connect, and share. And I would like to show you some connections. First of all, network connections. This is not recent, but this depicts the connections, the wire connections, the fiber connections across the different continents of the world. And you can see a huge links between North America and Europe, uh, Japan, something in South America, but you can barely see Africa in the middle. I think this has improved and will be improved thanks to big project with uh, uh, like Africa Connect and Africa Connect too, but still there is a huge difference, a huge gap to be bridged. But this is not only in physical connections, but also in scientific connections. This is taken from uh, um, Web of Science. This is a map of scientific collaborations from 2005, 2009. So this links the co-authors of papers in uh, uh, health. And you can see again, Lots of collaborations, but very few lines connecting the rest of the world to Africa. And this is also seen here. This is the, the world where each country is rescaled by the number of documents in Web of Science. Web of Science is a database of publications uh, scaled by authors living in the country. So this is actually a map describing the uh, brain drain that affects Africa. People go outside and publish outside. Even if they are Africans, they publish in, uh, um, in uh, journals and in countries where they, they, go, they go there to, to, to make their work. And of course, the reason for this is that there are very few journals in Africa. This is the same, the same I mean, this is a, a gain. The, the world map rescaled by the number of journals published in the, in the country. So there is a problem of visibility and there is a problem of uh, uh, having uh, uh, African science and African scientists visible where they are in the continent they live in. So there is a challenge, make African science and scientists more visible to the world. This is actually the challenge that we took in Saigeya but there is an opportunity, exploit open science techniques and science gateways and e-infrastructure technologies to do that, to make African sciences and more visible. And the action is to train new generation of open science champions. Uh, Simon already introduced uh, and made some, some uh, concrete examples about how a scientist can become more visible. And now in this presentation, I'm trying to go through the actions so we put in place to, to achieve a, a, a new generation of open science champions. So in the Saigeya War Plan, of course, so the main aim is to create sustainable foundation and educational material and procedure for the development of science gateways and e-infrastructures. And this is mapped on four different work packages. So here today, I will talk about work package four, which is about training. But Training is also related to all other, to all other uh, work packages. So um, yesterday I've already shown the federated platform for an open science commons in Africa, the SciGaia open science platform. Uh, again, uh, some enablers of open science. Open science meant that so you can easily go from concept to publication, but you can go more importantly the way or the other way around, looking for publications and retrieving all the aspects. I mean, all the elements, data, software, virtual machines, and so on that uh, can uh, can can allow you to uh, reproduce, but more importantly to reuse the data. So I will concentrate on the training aspect, on the ed educational aspects. Uh, Indeed, e-infrastructures 
I yesterday I, I mentioned the the concept, I introduced the concept, are very important tools and platforms and services to connect two vertices of what we call the triangle of knowledge. The triangle of knowledge connects research and development, innovation and education and training. And e-infrastructures are great to uh, improve research and development and of course as a side product to trigger innovation. Uh, but uh, we need to connect uh, research and development and innovation to education and training and vice versa. Because innovators and scientists, they start school, they, they follow courses at the university. So we need to, to bring these connections. So together with e-infrastructures, we need to build users of e-infrastructures. Build means to form, to try to, uh, to um, share them uh, open science concept and uh, uh, let them uptake the open science paradigm. So together, uh, or along with the infrastructures, we also need what is called T infrastructure, training infrastructures. And we need training programs. And we need to release, to deliver all the training material as open educational resources in the meaning of this uh, uh, concept uh, first defined by UNESCO. So if you go to this page, if you follow the open education resources, you will be redirected to the UNESCO page that's uh, defined this concept very clearly. So um, in Saigeia, we, uh, we wanted to have a courseware infrastructure. We compare several tools, and in the end, we choose Open edX for several reasons. Open edX is fully open has been built from scratch to, uh, to be able to, f to create and run MOOCs, massive online open courses. And uh, uh, it can be uh, not only, uh, it, it, it works not only as a host, you can put your educational content, but you can clone your own, your, your own version of Open edX and fully customize it. And of course, another reason was that uh, you can enable federated login on open edX uh, servers. So the idea was to produce a lot of materials and uh, uh, fed this open edX courseware with courses that can be easily uh, reused. And of course, so we are open to uh, open educational resources uh, created by other people and uh, we are very willing and, and, and happy to host this educational content in our uh, courseware platform. So the Open edX platform is one of the elements of the Open Science uh, platform. And the idea is that uh, these courses can eventually be adopted in university curricula in Europe and Africa. I mean, we, um, we uh, touched this concept yesterday during the panel, and there are big universities in, I would say, several, I mean, several tens in the top 500 using Open edX as platform for their e-learning material. So if you create an open science based course on an Open edX, you can use it as a brick. You can get out of this and immediately in, uh, uh, include in uh, and the same Open edX platform in your university. So, in the SciGaia website, we have a prominent link to the training and educational material, and this has been ordered uh, in uh, different sections according to uh, the work plan, according to the task that we we have in the in the in the, um, in, in, the in, in, in the work plan of, of of the project. So we have uh, guidelines for the development of science gateways and e infrastructure services, and then we have educational materials for educational prog uh, programs. So this is an example. This is an example of course for Endron network engineers. is a course to turn a web-based service into a service provider of an identity federation. So we are, we, are, uh, we are trying to promote identity federations and several identity federations are becoming uh, active. I mean, South Africa uh, uh, um, uh, delivered 
the, the new version of its identity federation and recently joined the Edogain identity federations. And we are doing, we are doing efforts to do the same in other countries. But the problem is uh, the real advantage of an identity federation is the portfolio of services that you share, that you federate. So you need to, to, to transform web-based services into service providers of a federation. And this course is all about this. We created this course together with GAR, which is the Italian ENRIN, National and Educational Research Network. So open educational resources, all the slides, all the video lessons are on the open access repository and they are tagged with DOIs. And so we have open educational resources as DOIs. So yesterday I went to the concept of research package. Uh, Simon touched the same concept today. So a series of elements that constitute a package, I mean, a research package. This, those series of elements are an educational package. Citable, reusable, and findable. Because uh, uh, you can, uh, you can, since the, uh, the open access repository has an OEI PMH endpoint, you can have services that harvest our open access repository looking for open educational resources. So you can build your own course taking the lessons and taking bits and pieces from different open educational resource servers. But uh, having a set of slides and having a set of video lessons is not a course. This is training material. Every teacher will tell you that you need to have assignments and you need to have tools to monitor the progress of, this, of, of the students. And this is what we did. So this is our Open edX platform. And this is the course created inside the platform. So we have the video lectures are embedded and we have assignments, exercises, and uh, checkpoints for the students. Uh, we did this also for uh, the winter school. The winter school was an online, completely web-based course that we ran uh, last year in, uh, in, uh, in March. And this was about uh, um, training people ab about how to integrate, develop applications and integrate applications in a science gateway. And again, we have the same format. We have the winter school, we have the course on open edX, and we have all the lectures. All the single lectures, all the single video, all the slides are on the open access repository with the DOIs, so you can reorganize the way you want. And then we have a course that you can reorganize the way you want if you follow the open uh, uh, um, framework of Open edX. But besides online, besides e learning, uh, SciGaia wanted to have an impact on real courses, face-to-face -face events. So we came up with the e-research hackfest model. And the model is uh, two weeks of intense development work. So the first two days, we present technologies and tools to people. Actually, we open a call for applications. We invite people to apply. And uh, we invite also people to get support letters from their organizations. So we don't want to have applications that are inter in, in, in interesting for one single person, but we want to have people coming at the school, developing applications that are interesting for a community, for a research community, for a community of practice. So we, we made the selection, we invite people, we present technologies and tools to those people, then we listen the, the, to their presentation on the use cases and they tell us which ones of the uh, uh, technologies they have listened and they have uh, learned in the first two days they want to actually use. And then we work the rest of the time side by side in the same room, eight o'clock in the morning from 10 p.m. In the, in the evening to implement this. And then the final day, the, the, the teams present their final results and become uh, officially Saigeya champions. So uh, the model is that we want to use web technologies as much as possible and standards to let users interact with e-infrastructure services. So they come with a use case and we show them a 
the services of the open access of, of the open science platform, but the, we, the common denominator is that they only learn how to use the REST API. They don't even see the service. They see how to interact with the services from, from a programmatic point of view. So we, we, we show them REST APIs to interact with science gateways, with uh, open access repositories, with uh, 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 knowledge bases. And this REST APIs connects the use case to the services which are, which are deployed on a real e-infrastructure. So the concept of training infrastructure and e-infrastructure somehow merge. So you can really do challenge-driven education and challenge-driven training on real production quality e-infrastructures with the open science commons deployed on them. So we run four ACFEST, two in Catania, one after the other, to hello people. We get problems to getting people due to the visas, this is a common problem. So we run two, two weeks in the same month, in July last year. So 36 participants from nine countries, uh, because we run this in conjunction with two other European Union funded projects. So we got uh, 36 participants, 10 instructors, uh, twice 11 days, so two, two full weeks. We, we, we work Sunday to, uh, Monday to Saturday and then Monday to Friday. So Monday the first day, Friday the second, the following week is the final presentations day. So we recorded everything, every single lecture, every single lesson, every slide is recorded as an open educational repository, as an open educational resources and it's available on the open access repository. And of course, uh, can be included as a course on open science in an open edX based system. Uh, we had uh, several uh, media coverage and what's, what, what, what's important, 13 use cases, seven from Africa and six from Europe. So there we got the first Saigeia champions that are there and you can see some of them are here in the room. <clears throat> then uh, the model was adopted for the first time in Africa in Lagos, Nigeria at the Lagos State University thanks to the, uh, the organization work of EcoConnect, Wakren and Benjamin on behalf of, the, of LASU. So uh, 31 participants from Ethiopia, Ghana, Italy, Nigeria and South Africa, nine instructors and 13 use cases, 12 new use cases from mostly from Nigeria and Ethiopia, but one was an extension, was an extension of MIPAR. So MIPAR was proposed in Catania and then extended in the, during the ACFEST in Lagos. And then we started promoted this all around and uh, uh, we presented this at the beginning of November in a workshop in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. And thanks to, to Margaret and to Zalalem, the CEO of Ethernet, the Ethiopian Education and Research Network, we managed to run a hackfest in uh, Ethiopia. This was done. Uh, this was done in uh, uh, February, one month ago. So again, the objective was to uh, integrate scientific use cases uh, uh, using web technologies, and of course, the the, uh, the ultimate goal was to promote open science. Uh, these were the topics that we addressed during the, uh, the ACFEST and these were the tools and technologies that we, 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 we put in the lessons. And this is the outcome. So 20 participants from Ethiopia, Italy and South Africa, eight instructors, three there in person, uh, me, Rita and Mario, and five from remote uh, that uh, followed all the uh, students. Four use cases selected, three fully implemented. One of the one of the selected application. One of the guy had to leave uh, 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 um, during the course for personal reasons. So we managed to get three fully implemented use cases. And uh, I want to show you some about these use cases. So one that uh, actually started in during the Hackfest in Lagos and was refined during the Hackfest in Addis, in Addis Ababa was the Ethernet repository. So they cloned 
the, op the Saigeia Open Access Repository, and they want to use it for hosting publications, presentations, data sets, software, images, whatever, from the different uh, uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, universities. And do we manage to link the Ethernet Open Access Repository with the DOI prefix that they managed to get during the ACFIST. So the Minister of Education in person signed a request to get a DOI prefix, and during the course they got this, and uh, now they are able to tag their um, uh, uh, contents, educational or research contents, with their own DOI prefix. And they can, of course, link those contents with the ORCID ID pages, as Simon had shown before. The other thing is the MOOC platform. They were interested because there are several universities in Ethiopia going to launch e-learning programs. They wanted to have a platform to experiment with and to use for, for this. So this actually, this work started in Lagos and was finalized in Addis. They basically cloned the Saigeia open course system based on open edX and they customize it and they even started putting their own courses that's an object oriented programming course on java and uh, this is the the program this is the course and these are the lectures again the same philosophy you put the lectures you assign DOIs, you create open educational resources, and then you organize the open educational resources as a course. So you mix with checkpoints, or with exercises, and with uh, uh, evaluations. And uh, uh, we uh, created lots of materials. So you can, uh, you can go, we have uh, huge playlists on YouTube where you can get all the educational material and all the media. So not only, I mean, we paid attention to get the feedback from students at the beginning, mid-time, and at the end, just to understand where, how, what they, they learned, how they learned, and how we could improve this next time. And uh, now we are finalizing the use cases, and uh, we, are, we are running a campaign of what we call champions video. We made final interviews to all the champions and you can see all the champions video on, uh, you can watch all the champions video on that uh, playlist. So let me uh, summarize. Open science and open education are very much intertwined and should be fostered and promoted on the same footing. So open science is a paradigm shift in research, but this requires also a paradigm shift in, in education. So you cannot do open science if you cannot do open education and vice versa. But say so you can do open education for normal subject, but you should do open education on open science to train people as early as possible to embrace this new uh, um, paradigm, this new way of doing science and sharing contents. So all training material developed by Saigeia are released are open, as open educational resources. So they are on the web. They are citable, identifiable, and uh, 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 with the DOIs, and they are also, organ they are also organized uh, as uh, um, teaching educational packages. And the educational packages plus all the, the needed uh, for the courses, I mean, evaluations, tests, final exams are embedded in, uh, we have example of courses on our open edX based system. So the Saigeia Open Science Platform includes a courseware system based on Open edX. I mean, you have, see, you, you, you have seen it, which can be both used, but also cloned. As all the other components of the Open Science Platform, we say, I mean, if you are interested, you can use it, you can use any of them, or you can pick one and create your own and customize for your own purposes. So very, uh, uh, I mean, very modular and uh, also uh, open to um, uh, personalization uh, then by the different organization. So the act, last but not least, the Hackfest model has been key to promote open science and uh, to pursue the action that I, I, show, I showed at the beginning of training a new generation of open science champions. So now we have 35 champions working on 23 
different use cases and we are uh, working hard to have all the use cases done and fully implemented by the end of the project. Even if we don't succeed, uh, uh, we will still continue working with them, we will support them until they will be on their own. And so now we are also launching a campaign to move all the services from Europe to Africa, real, the services itself themselves to deploy on clouds, cloud infrastructures here in Africa. Thank you very much.